Hey, good morning, Spring Creek. Welcome. Good morning, Aaron. What's up, Anthony? Happy good Sunday morning, to church. You. Good to see you. Love you guys. Glad you're here. Yeah, we are just, uh, well, we're hanging out in a pretend lobby before service because we desperately miss you. A lot. Miss like human, a lot, a lot. human interaction. Yeah. And yeah, we just, we're going to pretend right now that with you online, with us sitting here together, that we are together just hanging out in a lobby before church because yeah. I miss that time a lot. And you know, Sitting in a lobby, here's here's the question that I know is on everyone's mind right now. Okay. With all the craziness going on, there's 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 just certain questions that people need answers to. Mm. And so I wanna I wanna ask you one of those questions. Oh, deep if, quick. if you're okay. Yeah, we don't normally go this deep this early in the morning, but okay. I feel like the people deserve an answer. Okay, I'm know? ready. So here's my question. When all of this is over, when all of it's said and done, mm. what is the first place you and your family are going to go out to eat. Huh. Okay, that is a question I've spent too much time thinking about. Uh, we've cooked at home more, but we've been going out and getting to-go food, and it's just not all the same. It's good. They try hard. Okay. I'm glad they're still, you know, providing the service, but I cannot wait to go anywhere that serves unlimited chips, mm. salsa, queso, and tortillas, and honestly, eat until I'm sick, because I've... Yeah. I'm an American and I'm ready to go yeah. enjoy that freedom. And let's be honest, I've never run out of chips at home. Yeah, they give you enough. They give you enough. But just knowing I'm just a raised hand away from another warm basket of chips, mm. something special about I've that. I've never said no and said, do you need more chips? Yes. Please. Yes, of course I do. Uh, yeah. And Absolutely. salsa and queso, thank you. Absolutely. I can't wait. It's going to be great. So you let us know. Uh, we want to know. We're all here in the lobby together. So you interact with us. Comment below. Where are you going to eat as soon as this is over? What's the first place you're going to, to visit? And there's a lot of things we're looking forward to, but going to, to a restaurant has to be way up on most of our lists. And if you're on YouTube, open the live chat button. You can do that there also, just so you know there's another place you can interact. We want to hear from you. We're all in this together, right? We're yeah. chatting in the lobby before church starts. Absolutely. You know what else I'm really excited about, thrilled over, pumped for, stoked out of my mind about? Okay, come on. Service here in just a few moments. Let's go. It's almost We're time. We're just, just a few moments away. Gather your family, turn the volume up, minimize distractions, yeah. and go all in this morning. Yeah. Lead in worship. Take notes. Show your family what it looks like to yeah. be in it's church. It's going to be a great time of worship, of teaching. We believe you're going to be blessed by it. We love you. Can't wait to see you again. Yes. Give you a hug and a handshake and a high five. When it's proper. When it's proper and say, love you. Have a great Sunday. Yes. Enjoy service. See you, church. We love you. Good morning, church. We're so excited you're here with us. We're going to get started in worship in just a moment, but I am sure that you're aware and thinking about the announcement that Governor Stitt made this last week uh, about our state reopening. There's, there's a plan in place, and there's phases coming before us, and we know there's, there's a lot out there. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. So, Pastor, I know there's a group of people that feel like, well, we need to slow this down. we got to be patient. We need to wait. And there's a group of people going, yes, finally, we're going back to church. We're going back to work. Uh, so, Tell us your thoughts on what's happening with church. What are we doing? I totally agree with both of those. Yeah. Both of those views. They make all the sense in the world to me. I, the last thing anybody wants to do is infect somebody yeah. but, uh, to, to ignore the, the, the risk or, uh, of spreading this uh, coronavirus. No, nobody wants to do that, and we certainly don't. The, the, uh, the precautions that we've been living by for five weeks haven't been lifted, and they won't be lifted. But Governor Stitt said on May the 3rd that houses of worship are, ready, are, are free to assemble again. And so uh, that, that's with the understanding of those precautions being maintained, of, of maintaining uh, physical distancing. So uh, if we have church next Sunday, uh, well, we're going to have church. We're going to have online church like we've been the last six weeks. Yeah. But if, in fact, we are able to invite uh, everybody that wants to to join us, We'll be practicing physical distancing. Yeah. There'll be no children's ministry or youth ministry or nursery because Governor Stitt uh, mandated that. That's just a step beyond. That's in phase two, but, right. uh, uh, but not in phase one. 
and, uh, and, and also he, he asked us to remind all of the people who are uh, vulnerable as far as their immune system is concerned or, or, or people that are over 65 to, to maintain uh, uh, sh- uh, safety, safety at home. Yeah. It's, it's safer at home. Yeah. And uh, uh, we certainly want to go by all that, that and we're, we're just weighing our options, and we'll, we'll announce to you by an update online uh, this week as we get more information about what the other churches in Edmond are going to do, what the city of Edmond wants us to do, because uh, we don't we want to we want to be completely in agreement with them. Right. And so uh, uh, may, maybe those that want to will be able to join us as we make our online uh, presentation. We'll announce the times if that's if that's what's what's going to happen. And certainly, I want to emphasize that anybody who wants to keep watching online because you'd feel safer waiting a little longer. A hundred percent. We right. enthusiastically agree with you. Yeah. You're right, yeah. and we want you to do that. We applaud uh, you feeling that way. So the message is, church, that we are diligently praying about this. We're thinking about it. We're working on it. Uh, we don't have all the answers, but we know that uh, God's going to give wisdom. Yeah, yes. And we're going we're gonna to move forward and press into this and figure it out like we've been doing for the last five or six weeks. So we're glad you're here worshiping with us. Uh, let's dive into service right now. Well, good morning. Thank you for joining us so much online as we begin to worship the Lord this morning. We just want to invite you in with us as we proclaim His praises and celebrate His goodness and His grace and His mercy and His love that He has for us. Let me just invite you to join with us and to sing with us and to worship with us, whatever that means for you in whichever way that you're comfortable in your home or wherever you may be this morning. We serve an unstoppable God and He is worthy of our worship. And so that's what we're going to do is we're going to worship him, heart, soul, strength, and might, and give him the praise that he deserves this morning. So let's just begin by prayer. Uh, Would you join with me in your home and and ask him just to come and ask the Holy Spirit to come and join us with us this morning. So, Lord, we love you. We worship you. What a joy it is, Lord, to be able to worship you unrestricted, Lord, that you aren't, uh, that you don't just receive worship according to where we're at and, and how we feel and and, and, and where we're located, Lord, that you are worthy of the praise, Lord, that flows from our hearts wherever we are at. And so, Lord, we just worship you. We give you praise and the glory that you deserve. Would you just come and speak to us this morning, Lord, as we give you praise and glory, as we listen to your word. God, we just invite you in what you want to say and how you want to speak, Lord. We love you. We thank you that nothing stops you, Lord, that you are in charge at all times, that you are in control at all times. We love you. Shout your praise forevermore. 
Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Father, we look to you, the one who does impossible things, the one who is so faithful. God, we look to you. We lift up a cry from our hearts to the one who is unstoppable to the one who does not for a moment take his eyes off of us or take his affection away from us. You are present. You are for us. You are with us. We look to you, King Jesus. Have all dominion. Be enthroned upon the praises of your people. Have your way, Jesus. We love you. You're worthy. We love you.
people who are looking for truth, would you come and bring your kingdom? For people who are looking for answers, would you come and bring your kingdom, your rule and your reign? For people who have never heard your name, would you come and bring your rule and your reign? For those who need reminded of who you are, would you come and bring your rule and your reign? Lord, we know that you have good things for us in heaven. We know that you bring joy and peace and hope and all of those things with perfection in heaven. Would you come and break in right now and bring those things? Bring hope where there's hopelessness. Bring peace where there's a lack of peace. Bring your joy and your love where there's a lack of true joy and love. Reveal yourself to us, Lord.
in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Oh, yes, it is. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Oh, and I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. the 
Thank you, Lord, that you fight our battles. And in the end, you are victorious. Nothing changes that. Nothing dethrones you. Lord, you are King of kings. And we raise a hallelujah knowing that you surround us. You go before us. You go behind us. You go beside us. You surround us at all times. And we thank you, Lord, that you are with us. And for that, we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Greetings to the online family who's joining us for worship and the preaching this morning. We're delighted to have you. I realize that things are progressing toward better around us, and we're excited about that, but there's a lot of people still hurting. And if you had been in church this morning, many of you would have come down and had a prayer partner agree with you in prayer. And we're your church. This is how we're having church. And, and God will make it work. Let's agree our faith together. Let's, let's touch the hem of his garment. It's just a matter of, of do I pray or do I not pray? Always the answer to that is yes, I always pray. And the other answer is we're going to pray with faith. Father, we believe in Jesus' name that mountains are still moved through the prayer of faith, that illnesses are healed through the prayer of faith. Lord, we ask you for the same miracles we'd be asking for you, uh, you for this morning that we need, the, the, the touch of your hand, the, the, the power of your word to, to just change situations, meet needs for people this morning as we, as we, just, as, as we would have if we were here. Lord, do it right here, right now. Let your power just flow through our prayers of faith. God, we pray that you'll heal bodies, that you'll minister to families, that you'll meet financial needs, Lord, that you'll encourage where, where deep discouragement has just tried to set in. Lord, lift us out of the miry clay and put our feet on solid rock. You're a God who's always, always able and always faithful, and we worship you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I'm preaching to you from a verse that has always meant a lot to me, Matthew 16, verse 26. I'm reading the New King James Version. It says, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I love this verse. This verse helped me gain perspective even as a teenager. And, I, and I, here's where I want to go with this verse. It asks a question very clearly. So I say, what is your answer? Would you please answer the question? It's like you were taking a test and there was a, a space provided for you to write your answer. Whether you write your answer or whether you decide what your answer is. 
Look at that question. What profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? It's a good question that deserves an answer. Of course, no one gains the whole world. So Jesus was including any, any amount of pleasure, any amount of uh, fun, any amount of uh, wealth, any amount of popularity, and any amount of comfort. It's all included in what he said. So wherever, wherever the place is, if you gain that, but you don't have a relationship with God that secures you being with God for all eternity, what have you gained? This may be one of the most compassionate things Jesus said. The, the more compassion the ha you have, the more truthfully you'll speak. The more risk you'll take that you might say something that's going to turn somebody away. But, but he, he came to tell the truth, so he wasn't going to back down from telling the truth. And his compassion made him say it as clearly as he said it in this question. He, he, with this statement, he puts things in clear perspective for anybody who will just honestly look at his question. How many people live life as if it's all about pleasure and all about comfort with no thought of their soul living forever beyond the comfort and pleasures that there are for us in this life? Jesus cared enough to tell us what we need to hear rather than just tell us what we want to hear. That's, that's something you should really appreciate when you open up the Bible and you read the words in red that are Jesus', Jesus words. He cared enough to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And so he told us, uh, he, he's basically telling us in this story, if, if you write a bestseller, and then your bestseller becomes a blockbuster movie, and, and you know, the wealth is just rolling in, and the next thing you know, people are wanting you to come to their event and speak. Just, just your appearance, they'll give you millions of dollars. So you've got so much wealth gathered that, that anything you can imagine is yours. Is yours. So you, and, then you, and, and, and let's say you even had the health to enjoy it, but you spend eternity with Satan in hell. In the place that was prepared for him, because you didn't have room for God in your life in all that. Let, let's, let, let me just ask the question Jesus asked, where is the success in that story? Where is their success? If your success was temporal, and, but, but eternally, you, you've, you've lost what God intends for you, and that's to dwell with him forever. Where is the success? Where is the profit? Uh, the truth is, no one gains the whole world or anything near it, anywhere near it. But many do lose their own soul. Jesus absolutely knew that reality more than anybody knows it, and he's talked about it a lot. He talked about hell more than anybody because he knew the reality, and he, and he knows that people lose their own soul all the time because of negligence, because of just hard-heartedness, because of indifference toward God, because of doubt, because of, uh, of being deceived and, and uh, are being misled by the, by the people around them. Uh, so those people that, that uh, are losing their own soul for eternity, uh, Jesus asked the question, what are they trading their soul for? What is so valuable that they'll, they'll, they'll you know, kind of turn down the volume on the voice of the Holy Spirit that's trying to speak to you? Jesus said, it isn't worth it. Whatever you're trading it for, it isn't worth it. So something needs to help us keep clear perspective about this. In fact, our world will deceive us and lead us down, a, down, down this wrong path if there's not something reminding us, something keeping clear perspective in front of us, uh, in clear perspective of the need of our soul to, uh, to be in close relationship with the Maker, the one who breathed the breath of life into us, who gave us this opportunity to be alive on this earth, our Creator. We need, our soul needs connection to Him. 
We need, we need reverence and, and trust in Him. We need all those things to have what we need in life. Something needs to keep us reminded of that. Uh, something needs to make every single one of us prioritize our spiritual well-being. That, that's something a lot of people just put on the back burner. Maybe, I'll, maybe they're procrastinating. Maybe someday I'll do it. You know, answering the question, why am I here? To whom am I accountable? How can I keep clear perspective when I, in fact, am surrounded by people uh, who live like it's all about pleasure? It's all, it's all about me. It's a me, me world. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, I went out, I was playing football, of course, and in the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, and our, our, the class that was just ahead of me, the, the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, had gone through three years of zero wins and ten losses. Three years of no wins. So, as often happens in athletic programs, uh, we got a new coach, and the new coach the two new coaches arrived when I moved from being junior high and as a freshman into high school as a, uh, as a sophomore. And so I, all, all my friends and I that uh, were, were playing football, we, we didn't have any idea what we were in for, but we also didn't want to have an 0-10 season that year. Now, now, now you get tired of that really quick. And, and, but we didn't know what we were in for. Uh, arriving was Coach Tom Taylor and Coach Cotton Wade. And, and they uh, immediately established themselves as our leaders and, and gained our respect. And in fact, if it wasn't given to them, they would demand it. And they, they, they created a respectful environment. They took us out to the practice uh, field and worked, may I say, worked our tails off. Man, did we work. I learned something about agility drills I had never I'd never known before where you roll on the ground, you fall intentionally, you have to get up and do that over and over again, and, and you, you run 50 yards and, and, and you're hitting the ground. All, all these crazy agility drills that would wear you out, and, and it was, this was in the summer morning of, of August before season started, and, and we were having two days, and man, he, we actually ran so much that many of us would lose our cookies, if you, if you don't mind me saying it like that. I mean, it was, uh, it, it was uh, uh, extremely exhausting, extremely, extremely demanding. And I remember one time when I, when I had so much of it, I felt so weary. I fell. I didn't think I had the strength to get up. And I remember one of the upperclassmen, because I was, I was the lower classman. I was a sophomore at that time. One of the older guys uh, came behind me, grabbed the back of my my. my uh, football pants, and, and picked me up. I don't know how he had the strength to do that, but picked me up and gave me a shove. And I've often wondered, if that hadn't happened, would I have had the encouragement I needed to get through what we were going through? You know, you know what Coach uh, Taylor and Coach Wade were doing? They didn't want us to lose 10 games that year. That They wanted us to, uh, uh, to, do, to get some kind of advantage that we hadn't had before so that we would not lose 10 games this year. They, they were trying to instill something in us that would move us closer to success than we had been uh, in, in a long time. And, and this, this called for this uh, extraordinary advantage that before we didn't have. That they were wanting to give us an advantage. So it wasn't just on the practice field that they, that they wore us out. They took us in the weight room. They, they, they bought a, a weight machine, I like, had like 10 stations, and we all spent hours, they converted one of the classrooms into a weight room, and we would work around the, the, that thing until you were, you know, your muscles were hurting and you were sore and you were tired, but you know what? We didn't lose 10 games that year. That, that, that's kind of jumping to the end. But, but you know, where, where, what else did they do? They, they, they got us out on the, on the field and made us practice catching passes over and over and made us pass, uh, practice the, the, the uh, the, the part of the game, the, the kickoffs and punt returns and all those th- kind of things. That, I mean, they, they coached us and coached us and, until we, we had an advantage that we didn't know the, the teams before us had been playing without. My point is that if, in fact, we're going to keep a good perspective, 
If we're going to have something in us that reminds us every day uh, of the, the danger of living for the wrong thing and living uh, without a, an awareness of the right thing every day of our life, if, 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 we're, if we're going to live with disadvantaged, then, then we're, we're, risk, we're living in high risk because we're not remembering the value of our spiritual well-being. But in fact, God wants to give us an advantage spiritually. He wants to give us the same advantage spiritually that our coaches were trying to give us physically and mentally as a team so that we didn't go out there and lose, lose, lose like we had the years before. They did turn us into a winning team. It took, it took three years to have a winning record. It was only my, my, the third year. And then when I graduated in the three years behind me that, that, that came up behind me, they went 10 and 0 three years in a row. It really worked. It really worked. The hard work paid off. The, uh, the, getting the advantage, the advantage of being in shape, the advantage of being strong, the advantage of knowing your place, the, the advantage of being disciplined, the advantage of, uh, of, of really being dedicated and, and, and pouring in the work, it paid off. What if you had that advantage spiritually? What if instead of being, you know, kind of, if it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, what, whatever, I, I'll, I'll find myself doing this, and spiritually, I'll, I, sometimes I'll be up and sometimes I'll be down, but, you know, if I, if I don't have time to go to church, uh, you know, for three weeks, uh, then, you know, maybe I'll be down spiritually, I don't know, but, I, but hey, there's always grace to cover that. This, this, this wrong attitude will rob you of the advantage of, of of keeping a clear perspective of, of your soul's value and your soul's need of a relationship with God. Um, advantage, I looked it up in the dictionary. Any state or circumstance or opportunity or means favorable to success. It, it, it means to have the advantage is to have benefit. Didn't Jesus ask the question, what would it profit? What would it profit? What will you gain? What will you benefit if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? My coaches said, what's the benefit of, of, of having a football team if you're going to go out there and lose 10 games? And Jesus comes along and talks about something a whole lot more important and said, what's the benefit of living a life and your soul didn't know your creator and you missed everything he wanted for your life? God wants you to have the advantage of, of something reminding you, something inside you that is a force for your spiritual well-being, a force to keep you connected with God. He wants you to live every day with an advantage. I'm preaching to you about that advantage this morning. Let, let, let's look at the context where Jesus said uh, the text that we used, uh, what shall it profit a man? This is the context of it in Luke's version. They're, they're all three pretty much alike, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They all three tell, tell what he said. But this is what Luke says in verse, chapter 9, verse 23. Then he said to them all, to all of them, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world him and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. You can't accuse Jesus of not telling it like it is, can you? You know, he wants you to win. It matters to him if you win or lose with your soul. And that's why he told you, it, it sounds like my coach that was telling us, well, the good news is you're going to run 100 laps today or whatever it happened to be that day. It's, it's like Jesus said, let, let me tell you this, if you desire to come after me, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. If you're going to come after me, uh, don't desire to save your life in this life. That, that's the wrong perspective. Lose your life for my sake. In other words, believe in me so much that what you want is my will for your life, and that's when you're going to find 
the life you're really looking for, the life you're really craving. If you find that life you think you're going to find, you're going to find out you missed it all. You didn't live it. That's what he's saying. He's just being like a great coach who's sitting out there, uh, who's out there on the field where you're teaching you from real life. This is how you can have the advantage spiritually. You don't have to be dragging into church. You can be, you can be excited about every opportunity you have in, in serving the Lord, whether it's church or whether it's uh, the, any day of the week. You can have such a relationship with God. That's what Jesus is saying. And then, having not been ashamed of him, having been connected to him here, he's not going to be ashamed of you when you stand in the, in the glory of the Father and all the holy angels. You know, I, it, it was amazing that Paul got a hold of this very concept in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. This is what he says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. In other words, he says, run with the advantage. You be the player with the advantage. You be the player who has the right perspective, the winning attitude. You be the player that's all in. And then he says, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. In other words, they make sacrifices so they can win. The one who wins in the Olympics is usually the one who put in the most practice, made the most sacrifices disciplined himself the most and, and, and honed their talent so that it, it could, because everybody there is very gifted and very talented, but somebody worked harder than everybody else and was more focused. Now, and, and this is what Paul says, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. We're doing it for eternity's sake, for something that's going to last for all eternity. Therefore, I run. Look, look at these phrases he says. I run thus, not with uncertainty. I fight, not as one who beats the air. I, am, I discipline my body and bring it under subjection so that when I've, lest when I preach to others, I myself should become disqualified. He's, he's talking about spiritually having the advantage. He said, I, I make sacrifices so that I have a spiritual advantage because the last thing I want happening to me after I've, I've gone out there and, and, and taught other people the, the way to have their soul healthy and, and in a great relationship with God is for, for something to come along and get my attention and drag me away from God. And the next thing you know, I, my soul has, has uh, dwindled into a place where I'm not even remembering God. He said, I don't want that to happen to me. I want the advantage. How did he get it? By running, by fighting, by discipline. And apply those spiritually to your life. It, it, just, it just speaks of commitment and effort. Satan, uh, he's your enemy and he seeks whom he may devour. Those are his own words. Uh, uh, he, he, he is finding a way to, to, to devour people like you and people like me, if he possibly can. Setting traps for us. The wiles, the Scripture says, of the devil. That's his schemes, his strategies, his plan. He offers lots of alluring attractions to steal your attention. Hopefully, he, he can steal your affection for God. And this is what's really tricky about the devil. After he gets your attention, after he allures you with something, and he, and, and he, and he sees that you look at it, this is what he tells you. He tells you that God wants you to have that. Now, at first, you were aware that this was a distraction. This wasn't, wasn't the will of God, but he's going to turn it around and try to make it something God wants you to have. You see, uh, he's a liar. Jesus said he's the father of lies. And so he has no boundaries what he can try to get you to think. He has no boundaries. He can say anything he wants to. If he, if he wants to say that's what God wants you to do, and He can get you to believe it. He is, he's got you hook, line, and sinker. The only way you'll know if He's lying is if you have the advantage of knowing the truth. So, this is, this is, this is where I'll start. I tried to think of what are the three top things that, that give me whatever advantage that I've ever found in my walk with God that keep me uh, attentive to God that keep me uh, in, in 
aware of, of the right perspective? What, what, are the, what are three things that have, have worked for me over the years that, that have, have been, if I ever had the advantage, I had it because of these three things. And the, and the top of the list is the advantage of consistently reading Scripture. The advantage of consistently reading Scripture. Really, our, we're saved by grace through faith. And the Scripture, continually reading the Scriptures nurtures my faith. It, 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 it reestablishes my faith when my faith has gotten a little weak. I, I, when I can take the Scripture and, and understand what it says, I can see God in what, he, what He's uh, saying there. I, 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 my, my spirits are lifted. My, it, it, it brings advantage to me every day that I consistently read the Scripture. The more familiar you are with the Bible, the more advantage you're going to have. Uh, it can, here, here's what it contains. It contains the promises of God. You get to see God as He is. He reveals Himself in His, in His Word. You get to know Him. Psalm 119, verse 105. Many of you already know what I'm going to say. Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I, I'd say that this, th- this, doing this spiritual calisthenic it's like lifting weights. It's going to make you strong. If you'll commit to, to lifting weights spiritually, pick up your Bible. Find time during the day that, that, that you can consistently read. You know, it's easier to study the Bible than it's ever been because of all the study helps. But I'll just name one, the YouVersion Bible, the Bible app. Right there on your phone. Your Bible, has it ever been with you everywhere you go? You got a phone? You got a smartphone? You have the Bible with you in many translations, many languages of the world, in case you want to speak more than one language. But you, you, there, there's no excuse. There's all kinds of access. It, it'll even read it out loud to you. If you don't want to, you, you can turn it on. I know people who do that. Uh, they turn it on, and they, and, and they just listen to the Bible. The Bible is easier to access today than it's ever been in, in history. And that's because God wants us to have perspective. God wants us to have an advantage. Like a good coach, that's what the Bible is. It's like a good coach to keep you reminded of the good perspective. Knowing what God gave you in writing. He put put all this in writing. That's in addition to what He says by His Spirit to your heart. But He put this in writing as an advantage from which you will gain every day and every night of your life. The Holy Spirit, once you've got some, some Scripture in you, you know, I want you to test yourself. What, what are the, if you sit down with a piece of paper in front of you, what are the ten scriptures that come to your mind first? And you don't have to know every uh, exact word of the whole verse or even where it is, but what scriptures come to your mind? Sit down and kind of test yourself. What are these ten scriptures? Those are the, those are the things the Holy Spirit can draw from. The Holy Spirit can draw from the Word that's in you. He, he will draw from the storage of that, that advantage you've built up in your heart and your soul to instruct you how to handle problems that you're going through, how, how to counsel un- others to handle their problems. That, the, he, he will use not only the Word that you get in you to help you, He'll use it to help people around you. Which would you rather give, your words or His words? But, but His words are are life. They are spirit and they are life. Um, Look at uh, when Paul talks about the armor of God, Ephesians chapter 6. Put on all of God's armor so you'll be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. That's what I was telling you about a while ago. King James says the wiles of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers of of this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. No wonder we live in a culture so misled because of what I just read. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll be standing firm. But what he just described there in verse 13 is the advantage that I'm preaching to you about this morning. The advantage of God's armor, the advantage of of every single piece of this armor that that will keep you aware of the perspective Jesus was was casting a vision so that everybody would see. What would it profit a man if he gains the whole world 
and loses his own soul. He's talking to a crowd of people, no doubt, that, that many of them were losing their soul at that very minute. But hopefully he reminded them of the real perspective. Well, that's what every piece of God's armor will do. And the first piece, stand on your ground. Stand your ground putting on the belt of truth. Having your loins girt about with, with, with truth. With truth. Truth. That's what the Bible is. It's truth. It speaks truth to you. That's why it had, don't have to have a new edition of it uh, every year. Oh, God's got to change this and change that because that, if you tell the truth, you can go back years later and it'll still be standing right straight up. That's what the Bible is. It's truth. Stand your ground. And then, and then verse 17 says, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's what I'm telling you. It's like lifting weights. You, you, you'll have the advantage if the Bible is part of your everyday life. The, the second advantage that I remember uh, making the, the biggest difference in, in my, uh, be, being an advantage to me, keeping me spiritually honed, spiritually, uh, spiritually alert, sp- spiritually inclined, drew, drew me back to God when, when my soul would have wondered, is just a simple prayer life, advantage of consistent conversation with God. Prayer is conversation with God. Ongoing conversation with God. You know, it's, we talk frequently. We talk throughout the day. I, I, I desire, I desire to walk close to Him so we talk. I, I, I love to hear Him, and, and I, I'd like to say I'd love to hear Him more often he would love to say, I wish you'd listen more often. So if we, if we would choose to listen more often and, and, and pour out our heart to Him in conversation, we're going, that's going to be for us a tremendous advantage to keep spiritually alert of the truth uh, and, and, our, and keep our walk with God the way it ought to be. Uh, if you will commit I realize that everybody's day is, is full. It's full. Is it full of something more important than your soul? Your soul uh, spending eternity with God. Your soul, soul staying close to God. If you commit some time, you know, that, that movie War Room talked about the woman who went in the closet and there was a place that she could sit in there and she put her prayer request on the wall. If you just had a war room, if you just had a war room chair, I, I created one after that movie. I created a, a war room chair, and, and, and that's, that chair is, is still a place when I go there to sit and talk. It's, it reminds me of the commitment that I need to be faithful about making, but I, if I can't make it to that chair, I talk to him wherever I am. I talk to him while I'm driving. I talk to him while I'm walking. I, 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 I'm not the epitome of a prayer life, but there. I'm, I'm telling you that the times that I, I, I maintain conversation with God, I have this advantage, this spiritual. He, he, I would call this one like running laps, you know, running laps. That, that's what we had to do a lot of, run laps. Run until you were, were, were sick of running and, and feel like you're too tired to, to make it to the end. But it gets your lungs in shape. It, got, it gave me the advantage. It gave our team the advantage of being of being able to win instead of lose. And instead of wearing out in the fourth quarter, we still had something to go with. And God knows how, if, through, those, through, through those conversations with Him, to keep you with an advantage so that you know it's worthless to gain anything that's in this world and lose your soul. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Don't you love that verse? Isaiah 40, verse 31. It's it's there to talk about you having an ongoing conversation relationship with God. And the third, uh, uh, there's so many things on this list. I mean, I'm just giving you the three that occurred to me the, the most quickly. And the third one is the advantage of spiritual conversation with people every day. It's not, you talk to God, yeah, of course. Uh, And those are spiritual conversations, but what if you got people who you have spiritual conversations with? It 
I'm, I'm pastor, so I'm really blessed to have lots of spiritual conversations with people. And I can tell you, when, when they're talking about spiritual things, it does something for me. When, the, when they're letting me talk about spiritual things, that does something for me. Both of them give me the advantage. The more spiritual conversations I can have in, in, a, in, you know, in a day, if I live that way, I have, I'm have consistently having spiritual conversations with, with my wife, with, uh, with, with people at work, with people on the phone. Spiritual conversations are life-giving. They, they are like eating a healthy diet. You know, that's, that's one of the components of having the advantage. If you're, if you're playing football, you need, to, you need to, they made us quit drinking carbonated beverages, and they warned us if you were smoking cigarettes, you'd get kicked off the team. And uh, uh, for whatever reason, they were re- really trying to, to make us have a healthy diet. And, and if you're trying to get in shape, you know that that's, that's one. Of, if you want to keep your body in its best condition, a healthy diet. That's what spiritual conversations will do for you. If you don't have any spiritual conversations uh, going on in a, on a regular basis, uh, find somebody else that wants there to be some going on in their life too. And then just get out the Bible and have some spiritual conversations with each other. That, that you don't even have to be present. You, you could Zoom. You could, uh, you could do it uh, on a, face to, a FaceTime call or just, just on the phone. You, you don't have to be together, but being together adds a bonus to it if you can. But the advantage of spiritual conversations. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how, how much that's going to make a difference for you and convince you until you do it. Until you do it. You can find somebody that's, that's going to grow because... You're letting them talk about their spirit. And what, what they say is going to help you. It, you're you're going to relate to it. And it's going to give you an idea of something you can say back to them that's going to help them. And it's going to help you. Everything you say is going to help you too. Those spiritual conversations, they, they pull something out of us that's, that's, that's in a deeper part of our memory that we don't, we don't think about very often, but it's there. And we can kind of we can kind of uh, flesh out our our spiritual life, all our spiritual thinking process, if in fact we're having spiritual conversations with people. To all of you who are listening, and we've had a spiritual conversation, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to have a spiritual conversation with you. Thank you. And, 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 and I thank you for being that for other people that you, you're letting them have spiritual conversations with each other. May, may we please be a church that, that welcomes from... from uh, West Side Assembly to East Side Assembly over here. That, that every one of us ha- have an open door. We want to have spiritual conversations with each other on a regular, ongoing basis. So now I'm, I'm backing up to, I've got those three things communed to you, and now I, I just work my way into the, into the landing of this message. Remember, those words Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Think about those words again. What's your answer? Can you give yourself the greatest possible advantage by by finding some things, like I've mentioned to you, that work? and, And you live feeling like you have a spiritual wind behind you. Like, like if the devil's going to chase you, if he's going to try to trick you, you've got, you've got three steps ahead of him. He, it's unlikely he's going to be able to, well, it's, no, we don't run from the devil. We turn around and just deal with him with the authority of Jesus. That wasn't a good illustration. But, but if the devil's going to try to trap you, you, you are, you're three steps ahead of him in alertness and readiness because you've got an advantage. I, I feel like I have that advantage. I, and and maybe, maybe people think it goes uh, with being a pastor, and, and if it is, it's because I have to be in the Word. I have to be constantly having conversations with God. And I have to be in spiritual conversations. But you don't have to be a pastor for all those things to be happening in your life. How can you choose to embrace and give yourself the greatest possible advantage so that you, you're just likely to, to be gaining a, a relationship with God and, and as what you're getting from this world, it, it doesn't really matter to you. It's, that's not what life is all about. Life is all about the relationship of, with God, the will of God happening in my life now, and the will of God happening in my life forever. Let's ask Him to open up our eyes to, to every help He's provided to give us the advantage because He's given us lots of tools that we use. I mean, what has He provided for, for you to help you win? He, 
and what is He willing to provide that you haven't even seen yet that, that He would use to give you the advantage over the enemy of your soul who's clearly a deceiver and a liar who wants to steal and kill and destroy from you. Um, there's no limit to the advantage God wants you to have. He does not want you to be vulnerable to the devil. He does not want you to be floundering. He doesn't want you to have a spiritual life that looks like this. He doesn't. He wants you to have the advantage. The advantage. The advantage of the Holy Spirit walking with you, speaking to your heart, giving you wisdom, leading you to His Word, leading you in, and helping you in prayer, and, and enabling you to to uh, have spiritual conversations that matter with other people. It's the Holy Spirit's work to help you with all that. Um, I just want to invite you to respond to this message with a yes. And here's, the, here's what I want you to say yes to. Lord, would you make my soul more important than anything this world can offer me? Would you make matters of my soul, the condition of my soul, to be inestimably greater than anything this world offers me. Lord, I really do want to lose my life for your sake and find it yet again. I, I want to not be ashamed of you in this world so that someday when I'm with you in the glory of your Father, you're not going to be ashamed of me. Is your answer yes? I know it is. I know it is. I know in your heart you don't want to, you, you can't deny what Jesus said. It's not my word you're agreeing with. It's His word. It would, be, it would be crazy to gain anything this world offers and lose your soul. So, Lord, make, make my relationship with you the priority it should be. I invite you, if you haven't already, to give your life to Jesus. Give Him ownership of your life. Commit to Him. Embrace His truth. Ask Him to teach you everything He came in this world for us to know and give you the spiritual advantage, the advantage to run this race. Like Paul said, I'm trying to run this race, race to win, to win. I've disciplined my body. I, I'm running. I, I'm, I'm working at it. The advantage that God wants you to have. Would you say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I receive it by faith. I want to pray with you. Heavenly Father, please pray this prayer with me if you're committing your life to Christ. Heavenly Father, whatever I lose of this world, I've really lost nothing. But if I lose with you, if my soul doesn't connect with you, I'll never even know what it is to be alive. Would you connect me with you? Would you connect me so powerfully that, that I have the advantage of, of that connection growing stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger? Do your work in me, Lord. Lord, Make my soul awake and alert. Help me, Lord, to have the advantage, the advantage of, of your word present in my heart, your, your, uh, your, your presence in, in, in our conversation. And, and, Lord, use my life so that in conversation with others, we will grow closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. May God help us with every sermon live out what He taught us from His Word. Wow, thank you so much, Pastor, for an incredible word. And we are so excited for those of you that said yes this morning to our relationship with Jesus. We celebrate with you. We're excited for you. And we want to come alongside you and partner with you through this process. We want to send you some information, make sure you have a Bible, answer any questions we can, and just walk through this journey with you. So would you do us a favor, if you made that decision today for Jesus to be your Savior and Lord, would you text I said yes, all one word, I said yes, to 405-347-8195. I said yes to 405-347-8195. 
8195. We're going to encourage you uh, and hopefully send you some information that will be beneficial to you, get you plugged in with people that will love you and encourage you in this walk to help you fulfill the, the incredible conversations that Pastor was talking about just a few minutes ago. And also, we want to encourage you, if you are out there and you have a prayer request, something that we can gather around and pray with you, would you do us a favor? Would you send an email to info at springcreekassembly.com? That's info at springcreekassembly.com. Send us an email. Share your prayer request with us. We'll pray as a staff. We'll invite our prayer team and prayer service to join with us and praying for that need. You can also fill out a Connect card online. If you're new to Spring Creek, just finding us online, fill out a Connect card on our website, springcreekassembly.com. We're so thrilled to have you with us this morning. We want to make sure that you are loved and taken care of, that you know that you are a valued member of this family. To all of those that have found ways to continue to give, thank you for your generosity, your obedience, your kindness in that. We thank you and believe God is blessing you for it. And we pray that through all of this, that, that he would be honored and glorified, that this his word would continue to move forward because of your faithfulness and giving. We love you so much. We can't wait to be back together with you. Can't wait to give you a hug and a high five. But until then, we will see you online Wednesday night at our prayer service. Love you. Have a great Sunday afternoon.